everybody got a little bit of rest today and doing, uh, doing a little bit better this evening. Appreciate you coming out. Been a good day today. We didn't get too wet today. Amen. Been all around us, but uh, I didn't rain up on the mountain as far as I saw. <coughs> but anyway, we're glad you're here tonight. Amen. We did find out all the information about the funeral. We'll tell you about all of it in just a little bit. And uh, we, we got to get together. There is going to be a meal. I told them we'd help them with a the meal, so we'll figure all that out uh, tonight before we leave. And anything we need to do, just pray for Miss Lena. And uh, said she woke up, uh, said the beeper went off, and said she woke up and got to be with him as he took his last breath, sir. So she was pretty shook up about that, tore up about that, as you would too. And so let's pray that God would uh, be with that family and help them in a mighty way. Also pray tonight, my sister called or texted me just before church about 30 minutes ago. They got my mother in the ER room and got a pain going down her right leg right now. So I don't know what in the world is going on, but uh, we need to pray for her. I told her I'd check with her after church, find out what's going on, okay? So uh, anybody, anything between today and tonight, got any prayer requests? I, I, I seem like I got all of them tonight, but anyway. Who? I didn't hear. The spells of Lee and Brittany Palmer. Oh, yes. Uh, Lee and Brittany was telling me today at dinner and uh, said they've got uh, somebody looking at uh, trying to get approved, so we need to pray that that thing gets sold this week. Amen. Hey. They really need to, really need to sell that house because he owes his daddy a lot of money, and I would really like to get paid right before Jesus comes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding on that matter. I probably don't care more than you with me. I don't know. But anyhow, we uh, need to pray to God that that would be a tremendous burden off of his shoulders. Amen. So let's pray tonight. And uh, I can't breathe tonight. So open us up in prayer and let's pray tonight. All right? Yeah, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to Yes.
Well, I know the first Saturday of November, 604. It's 2 o'clock Wednesday, okay? 2 o'clock Wednesday, and we've got part in it, and uh, we've got the music, and Brother Carter and myself, and another preacher. That's uh, what Miss Lane was asking. I'm going to get with her tomorrow. And then when we get through, uh, we will come back like we always do after the graveside. I don't know where that's at, but after the graveside, uh, we will come back here and then have the meal. So you ladies, uh, we'll get with that tonight. Hey, hey, Miss Jackie, I'm looking at you in which way or whose turn it is. Uh, you ladies, why don't, Miss Jackie, why don't we get together tonight? Can we do that? Or who's, 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 we want to get together, Miss Marie. Is that what you want to do? Let's meet uh, with Miss Marie and, and y'all help Miss Marie come up to the list yeah. and let's figure out our A, B's, and C's there, okay? And help Miss Marie with that, okay? You give Miss Marie anything you need, of course you let us know, okay? I don't know the viewing. She didn't tell me the viewing on the phone, so I don't know the viewing. I would probably per se, uh, what are you, Tuesday night? Two to four and six, six eight. At OU? Yeah. Two to four and six to eight, Tuesday. Tuesday, okay? So 6 to 8, Tuesday night, 2 to 4 as well, okay? She didn't tell me, and I didn't even think to ask her, so. All right, so y'all be praying for them, and the Lord will help them in a mighty way there, okay? All right, that's what y'all come on this evening. It's good to see uh, Daddy back there with his little bubble. We, we were drooling. We got a, we done dragged, I don't know what to say, but that Baby has to have mama's looks. That's all I got to say. <laughs> as cute as that baby is, that's all I can give you, buddy. <clears throat> he sure was a pretty little thing today. We love him and uh, praise God. What we're going to have to do, and I thought about it today, honest to goodness, I did. We got two wooden wooden rocking chairs back there in the nursery, and I'm going to put in some. Uh, start putting in. We need to raise some money for two of them soft gliders. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the rockers. Uh, we're going to be doing some business here pretty soon with the daycare, and we're going to have to give a couple of them, okay? So uh, y'all keep that in mind. We're going to start a little fun around here, raise a little money towards that, and give us two of them, because all of a sudden we're having baby itis around here in this church, amen? And uh, so the baby's showing up from every direction in the world. We praise God for it, amen? And I'm looking for at least five more grand youngins myself and my own family. But anyway, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Amen. But uh, I can barely handle the one Gracie Cole I got now. I can just barely handle that one right now. Hey, Gracie. <laughs> hey, baby. She said, Pat Ball Bear said the fool out of me. <laughs> hey, brother, I can pray for us. Father, we come to you tonight. We come to you just thankful right now for the avenue of prayer. God, thank you that we can come to you, Lord, and bring petitions to you. God, we know you're going to act according to your perfect will. Father, I pray right now for the Leonard family. Lord, I ask you to be with them in a special way to come to them. God, thank you for answered prayer we've heard about today, Lord. The people we've prayed for, that, Lord, you saw the answer to prayer. Thank you for that. God, I pray for this church, Lord, that we will be a praying people. That, Father, we'll wear our kneecaps out praying. And, Father, may we put feet to those kneecaps, Lord. May we yes. do that which you'd have us to do. I ask you to anoint your service tonight. Bless this offering, Lord. May it be sufficient for the need of the hour. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Association and everything for Brother Frank's services, there's a checkoff line when the funeral director is making arrangements. See, I know this from the inside. That asked the question, did you explain to the pastor what time the services were going to be and all the other pertinent information? So when he called me and asked me to be a part of the service, that's where I got it all. And but uh, we do encourage you to visit with Sister Linda and the family. And I I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Some of you will say, Well, I don't know them. Well, this is the way you get to know them. That's right, amen. Brother Frank, I've been friends a whole lot of years. Amen. They used to be members they had colonial Baptist years ago. And I used to visit his mother and dad both in the hospital before they died and of course had a part in both their services. And uh, so, Frank and I have been good friends for a whole lot of years. So let me encourage you. Go by Wednesday afternoon, I mean Tuesday afternoon, and attend the service if you can. But if you can't attend the service, at least go by and uh, meet her and, and, and sign the register Amen. book. And I believe that God will bless and encourage your heart. And as we often make mention, one of these days, this time is going to come for you. Yep. I'm working in the service out at uh, Mount Zion Baptist Church out in the country tomorrow. That this dear lady, I mean, she thought she's going to live forever. But she didn't make it to 55. And some of you are older than that. Yep. So share with others in their time of need. And folks, I guarantee you, others will share with you in your time of need. Right. Because I don't care what you say, the law of sowing and reaping is still in the Bible. You reap exactly what you sow. But anyway, right now, stand with me. If you don't, you know, I'll catch you with me too.
So good to be back in God's house. I, I came all the way to service time to get back in there. Thank God for the message this morning. I'll tell you, thank God. Uh, I was thinking as he was preaching, if we would come up to those doors right there as we enter in, leave everything airplane outside. Come inside to worship the Lord. When they was in the upper room, they was up there with one accord. If we would come in here with one accord, we'd see something happen. Yeah. And I thank God for the message this morning. Mm -hmm. Because he loved me so much, he forgave me my every sin. And he said, I'm blind and far as he said from west. Now I can remember this again. <laughs> Oh, come 
go out here tonight thanking the Lord for loving us. Amen. Amen. We ought to have an intimacy towards Him. Right. And I'm glad when you have it towards Him, He already has it towards you. Amen. He loves you tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, be with us tonight. Help our voice tonight. And Lord, thank you for these faithful children of God that love you tonight. They didn't have to come. They came because they love you tonight. They want to show their faithfulness to their Savior. I thank you, Lord, for them coming. I pray, Lord, uh, that this hour would not be in vain. Thank you for the word of God tonight. And Lord, I pray tonight that you'll help each and every one of us as we try to bring out the truths in this passage of Scripture. And Lord, help us tonight go out of here thinking about how much you really do love us tonight. And uh, Lord, we rejoice in the thought tonight. Thank you. Help us in the word. Bless all these prayer requests tonight, I pray. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, you know these stories. I know you do. And uh, we speak often about God's great love for sinners. Just the very thought, the very thought, you think about it. It's hard today to get a sinner to even sit down with you, much less talk to you. What was so different in Jesus' day that they would sit down with him and talk with him? You ever thought about it that way? <clears throat> they sat down with him. <clears throat> they wanted to talk to him. And it's a blessing to see what the Lord shows us in these stories. Each of these stories stresses nothing less than the great love, the great extremes that the Lord will take to reach every heart and in particular, every sinner's heart. You think about the thing of salvation tonight. Amen. You think about the Word of God. And you think about the many people tonight that are saved by the grace of God. And I'm going to tell you tonight what salvation is. Salvation is individual. Amen? Right. And it took a holy God to come to you individually, to speak to your individual heart, to show you that He individually loves you. Amen. And you got saved that way. Right. We ought to take a lap around the building just for that. The, thank God that he individually spoke to me and spoke to each and every one of us. And he loves us that much tonight to know that he would take the time to speak to us that way. What a blessed truth that is tonight. And so we see here tonight this chapter. You know this chapter speaks about a lost sheep, the lost silver, the coin there, and the lost son. And each one of these has a specific, uh, it's a parable, they're parables, and Jesus is trying to teach us some truth here tonight. And the, these chapters illustrate the love that God has uh, for the sinner. It, it applies to each and every one. It, it, the, the applications in the chapter, they are twofold. The truth taught show the extremes that the Lord will take to reach an unsaved or a lost sinner, but they also illustrate the extremes that the Lord will take to reach a backslidden believer. Amen? Right. And he'll do that as well. And uh, for those of us that have wandered off before and gone away, so we see the sheep, the coin, and the and the son were all previously possessed by its owner there, but then were lost and they wandered away from the owner or their master there. So that's the illustration of the two the twofold truth that we see here. In these three stories, we find nothing more than the work of God uh, <clears throat> of a sovereign father. We see a, a father's work here. We see God the Son. And God the Spirit in reaching the lost and wayward sinner, bringing them back to the fellowship, and just restoring them back again. I tell you, if you ever want to see how much God loves you, read Luke chapter number 15. Amen? Because it's in the story we see that the lost lamb, uh, we find the work of the Son of God seeking out the sinner and to restore and redeem the, the sinner there. And that's just what Jesus was when he came to this earth. Luke 19 and verse 10 said, for the Son of Man has come to do what? To seek and to save that which was lost. He came to his own people. His own received and not. But he came to seek and to save those. I think we, we need to take on the same uh, thing that our Lord and Savior did. Amen? To seek and to save that which was lost and bring them to Christ and show them their need of salvation. So in the story of the lost coin of silver, we find the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's illustrated by the illumination of the candle used to find the coin. Amen. Somebody struck a light. And the light, the candle was that which sought out. And the light is what showed the, the way. And found out the way where the coin was. The lost coin was. And so the Holy Spirit helps us to come 
to our senses and to see and understand God's truth. <coughs> John 14, verse 26, you know the version. It says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send to my name, what's the Holy Spirit the Comforter do? He will teach you all things, and here it is, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. So the Holy Spirit tonight has a work to do tonight. His job, the Holy Spirit's job, is to bring you remembrance of what Jesus said. That's the Word of God. Thank God for the Holy Spirit to bring some light to it and show us our need. And so we know the story of the prodigal son. Uh, you know that. We find the great love of God, of uh, God the Father for all of us. And so the story is an object lesson. It's nothing different than Romans 5, 8, that God committed his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loves the sinner. He loves the sinner while he's sinning. Right. Did you get that? Yeah. There's a lot of sinners that don't know somebody loves them tonight. They don't know that. They need to know the, the, the love that Jesus has for them even in their sin. Now God wants them out of their sin. Amen. And he's offered great, great provision to get them out of their sin. Christ died for them. Amen. And so we see the story here of all these uh, three stories. They illustrate our importance. I like this. Uh, the three stories illustrate uh, uh, our importance and value to the Lord. I'll tell you tonight, we see here the story of the lost sheep speaks of one lamb. Think about it. I mean, there's 99 lambs. Amen. And 100 lambs. And when they lost one, leaving 99 there. And so... Uh, the value of one sheep, it teaches us. There was one lamb out of 100 that was lost. Praise God. And the lamb was 1% of the flock, yet it was considered very important there. Right. And Jesus is teaching the story like the lost coin. It speaks of one coin out of 10 that was lost. And this coin was 10% 10, 10 of all the coins that the woman possessed. Yet to that one coin was very valuable. Amen. The one son, there, there, there's, there, there's two sons, but one son out of two, one was gone, which means that 50% of the sons were gone. And a person may be significant or insignificant to a man, but praise God to the Lord, everybody and everyone is important and valued when, we, when the Lord sees them. Amen? <clears throat> they might be different in, in society and as far as their status is concerned. They might be poor. They might not have anything. I've been watching a man in town down here. You might have seen him down here at Walmart. Uh, I've been watching him there. He's been down here at Walmart when he ain't running him off. He's got a little sign. God bless you. Need help. A veteran, homeless, and all this kind of stuff. And so the reason I say I've been watching him because I was in Athens up the hill there. The other day went and got some lunch. My wife got me some lunch, and I was sitting down there, and here he come walking in the bar. Ordered him a big old Budweiser about that tall. Got his phone out was talking to somebody. I said, yeah, you buzzard, you, you ain't worth two cents. I wanted to kick him out in the street and say, he said, preacher, what were you doing in the bar? Well, I was drinking too, my sweet tea, but how to lose. I was waiting on my order to get ready. But I, I got to watch him, and I was putting one and one together there, you know. And he looked pitiful, and he looked poor, and had shaggy old clothes on him. That's maybe the way he wants to look. And I don't know where he might look, live right down the road here in a bigger house than you, you live in. But anyhow, he, he's painting a picture that he's pitiful and sorry. I'm going to tell you how sorry that rascal is. He's pretty sorry, but Jesus still loves him. Amen. And he needs God, and he don't even know he needs God, and he needs it. So uh, what, <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you uh, is the extremity of God's love uh, from the Almighty, I'm glad to say to you tonight, His love for sinners is enormous. It's expansive, it's extensive, it's expensive. Praise God. Jesus loves them. Uh, remember this verse right here, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord's not slack concerning His promise, as some men found slack. If you know this word, but is long-suffering to us. Amen. Aren't you glad He's long-suffering? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repent, praise God. So these three parables teach us some things, and they illustrate something else to us there. The, the picture, the picture here, uh, they picture three keys of, 
Uh, let, let me give you this. Three keys of the way people uh, tend to get away from the Lord. What are the three keys, uh, uh, three ways that people tend to, way, to get away from the Lord? Number one, wondering. Amen? Right. They wonder like the sheep. Maybe that sheep was out there minding his own business, you know. Got his head down, ain't paying attention. Eating, next thing you know, sees a little patch over here. Goes down the and eats a little bit. Next thing you know, sees another little patch. All along, got his mind on what they're doing, eating right there, and never knowing that they're falling away, going away, getting away from the shepherd all along. Then all of a sudden, they look up, where's the shepherd? They wandered and they wandered. Are y'all listening to me? And they wandered, and before it's over, they wandered away from the shepherd. There. That's exactly what's going on. Folks can get away from God by wandering away from Him like a wayward lamb. Many Christians have got out of church. You see, it's not just a, I'll make up my decision. Well, I'm not going to go to church anymore. No, it's a slow process. You just don't jump out. You just slowly leap. I don't feel good. I'll just stay home tonight. That's where most of them are tonight. Then they start leaking. Next thing you know, they wonder. Next thing you know, here's another step. Sunday morning comes along. I just don't think I'm, I'm just not going to do it. And that slow process of drifting. It's so a slow. The, the psalmist wrote it like this in Psalm 119, verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Let me tell you something tonight. If you wander from the Word of God, pretty much you're going to wander away from Him. Amen? They intertwine together. The problem is not you. The problem is the book. You've got away from Him. You've got away from the book. And you get away from the Word and get away from God and you lose that intimacy I was talking about this morning. And it's easy to get away when it's a, and when it's a slow process. Slowly it's getting harder and harder and harder. Next thing you know, you're gone. Right. Everybody's asking, well, where's so and so? Preach it, brother. Where's that? They ain't been around here in about a month. What's going on? Yeah. What is going on? They won. The second reason... Uh, we see them getting away from it. it is not only they wonder, but they're wavering. <coughs> they're wavering. Wavering fall. <coughs> As the coin suddenly fell. And you see the lady? She lost the coin here in Luke 15. Where'd it go? It suddenly fell. It dismissed from her presence. Suddenly. It's gone. Where's my coin? I can't find it. Suddenly it's gone. Just like the sudden fall of the coin, some get caught up in fleshly temptations at the spur of the moment. Amen. Right, right. You get caught up in temptations. They suddenly fall on you. Sensual desires are ignited and a person falls into sin like a dropped coin. Are you all with me? The circumstances were perfect for the fall of the whim of a moment, just like that. The whim of a moment, you make a decision and you fall. As the thread attaching to the coin, uh, attaching the coin to the headdress of a, of a woman was weak and broken, weak in resistance. Are you with me? Weak in resistance to temptation and broken fellowship with God can lead to a rapid fall in the sin. Yeah. You know, we ask one person tonight, we need to ask Peter in the Word of God. Peter knew what all this was about. All right. Yes, sir. Peter knew that it was like a fall away from the Lord when he was warned of his problem. That Bible says in 2 Peter 3.17, his own word said, Peter said, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, 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 lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. Right. I don't care if you're the best Christian in here. If you're not careful, you can fall in an instant. It takes a lifetime to build a testimony. It takes a lifetime to build your life. It takes a lifetime to stay steadfast. It only takes a minute to lose it. Right. You better be careful about that wayward, wavering fall. We see, we see number one wondering. We see wavering. And then number two, uh, I'm sorry, number three, we see another reason why they, they, they fall or they wonder from the Lord. Willful, willful rebellion. Just willfully. Right. The willful rebellion of the son led to his destruction in sin. The prodigal son said, give me what's mine, daddy. 
I'm out of here. And Daddy gave him what's his, and he hit the highway toward the hellway. He went to the bars. He, he spent all he had. He went out there, the Bible says, and arrived to living. That means he went down here party. He talked, he smoked, he drank, and probably did everything womanizing, did everything ungodly until he ran out of money. Are you with me? Willfully left the house. Willfully left the father. Willfully left home. And our rebellion and our hard heart can destroy us too. It can keep us from coming to Christ and keep us from trusting Him and it can cause you to run away from the Lord. Praise God. I'll tell you tonight, we see here the wandering, the wayward, and we see the willfulness of rebellion. There. Be careful tonight that you don't get called up in those three right there from wandering from the Lord. Amen. Let's just look at a couple things real quickly, and we'll go to the house. I want to show you tonight his love for sinners. Oh, my Lord, Jesus is telling us tonight that even though we see here a lost lamb here, he says, Lord, he's showing us who he is as the Lord, uh, uh, leaving the flock and leaving the fold behind to go out yonder. Think about you. You're a picture tonight of that lost lamb. And you see that lost lamb maybe out there in the bushes and the briars or maybe got caught up in the thicket. Maybe over near the cliff or, uh, you know, that's where you were. Had it not been for the love of an almighty Savior to come where you are, you'd still be out yonder in the thicket somewhere in the field of sin. Amen? Right. And so number one, we see here, number one, we see in verse number one, let's look at a rowdy crowd. The Bible says in verse one, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners <coughs> for to hear him. Now how about that? The publicans and the sinners sat down with Jesus. Think about that. Who in the world is these publicans and sinners? Yep. The Bible opens up here. We find a rowdy group here. This is a rowdy crowd attracted to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's amazing to me. These folks came to hear what Jesus had to say. And all throughout the New Testament, we can find... People attracted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Children were attracted to the Lord. Amen. In Matthew chapter 19, Jesus said to some of the little children to come unto me, and they were attracted to Jesus and wanted to get up in his lap. Amen. I pray my granddaughter would read that and, and take it to heart and get in her papa's lap every once in a while. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Brother Mike. The women have taken over in our family. But anyhow. Anyway. Children were attracted to Jesus. In this story, sinners approached him and wanted to sit down with him. Amen. We see it everywhere. Men accompanied him in Luke chapter 5. Shepherds and Mary adored him in Luke chapter uh, 2 there and, and Matthew chapter 2. The soldiers admired him in John chapter 7. A centurion acknowledged and confessed Christ there in Luke chapter 23. Pilate, when he was going to be crucified, was astonished at him. And he looked on him and said, I find no fault in this man. How can Jesus have such an effect on people like that? And then want to get around him and confess him and talk to him. Uh, the Samaritan acclaimed and praised him. Uh, Martha accommodated and served him. Praise God. We see people throughout all the New Testament that wanted to be around Jesus. Amen. We find this situation. Uh, the publicans and sinners came to hear the Lord. You see, these folks here today, these folks were considered the dregs, D-R-E-G-S, the dregs of society by the Jewish people. Notice what the word says here. Those uh, who were publicans, publicans, they worked for the government of Rome, whose army had occupied Israel. When you work for the government of Rome, publicans were the tax collectors. Amen. The Jews thought these tax collectors, I mean of Rome, uh, were guilty of extortion and greed. And they considered it, they were considered as traitors and crooks and, uh, by the Jews. The Jews didn't like them because they knew they were crooked. Amen. And these folks were considered as part of the problem in the nation and, great, and were greatly hated here. I'm trying to get you to see who Jesus is sitting with here tonight. The publicans and everybody else hated him. Shout out with Jesus. How about that? I like that. Matthew was a tax collector who was changed by the Lord. And so we see here the sinners mentioned here were rowdies of the society. 
I mean, they were the rough and the rednecks. They were what we would call the drunks and the prostitutes. They were the thieves and the murderers. And though everybody else despised them, and though most of society despised them, and though nobody else loved them, they sat down with somebody that did love them. Praise God. I want to tell you tonight, he'll sit down with you. Hallelujah. I don't care how far you want. I don't care how far you see you've gone. I don't care how much you want it. Amen. We have a Savior tonight. And he, he sat down with this rowdy crowd. And he loved them. Amen. It didn't matter if they were drunkards. He said, sit down down here and he'd eat with them. Amen. We've got a problem in our society as Christians today in the way we're looking at sinners today. They need to be loved just like my Savior loved them. Amen. We see here a rowdy crowd. Number two, we see... Not only a rowdy crowd, but we see a rough crowd. Look at verse 2. The Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man received sinners. It's enough to be a rowdy crowd, and then you're faced by the Pharisees and the scribes. This is the rough crowd. You say, Who are these people? Well, their pompous attitude toward Christ. These Pharisees. Their, their attitude toward Christ caused them to mumble about his methods. They mumbled about, they're murmuring right here amongst themselves, saying, look at this man, he sits down with sinners. And so they mumbled at his methods, they grumbled about his goodness, they stumbled at in their selfishness and self-righteousness, and they fumbled in their focus on truly important matters of heavenly people. Are you getting that? Here's a group of people that mumble, grumble, stumble, and fumble. That man, I can remember it that way. And in their own pious and their own self-righteousness, didn't give one care, didn't give a hoot about these uh, these dregs of society, and yet Jesus is sitting down, and while this group is over here murmuring against them, Jesus has to, to, has to love this rough crowd as well. Oh, my Lord. These religious folks, who should have embraced Christ and his work, resisted and rejected him. And they, those who normally would have repulsed the Lord because of their sinfulness, they were drawn toward him and his love. Boy, I want to say this tonight. Uh, let me say it like this. When your religion causes you to reject Christ, then you're going to be, you're going to be believing something. you believe anything, probably. If you, do, if you reject Jesus Christ, you will believe something that is deceptive. You'll believe something that is destructive. You'll believe anything that's damaging. That's why a lot of people, because they don't know the doctrines of the Word of God, they're falling for everybody. Yes. Jehovah's Witness knocks on the door and they believe what they say. Right, why? Because they don't know this. Yes. Amen? That's right. And if you're not careful, it'll come because we live in a day of false doctrine and false Bibles and false preachers and false everything. And I'm telling you tonight, they're built up on their own self-righteousness. They're Pharisees. You, are you hearing me? They have a little bit of religion that's going to take, take them into hell. Let me report to you tonight. There's a lot of religious people in hell tonight because they had a little bit. They only drank just once in a while. They only smoked just once in a while. They came to church once in a while. And because they rejected Jesus Christ, they'll burn forever in a Christless eternity in a burning hell. Amen? Why? Because they were religious. Self-righteous. God help us tonight. Their self-righteousness was an empty religion. And it condemned them to a Christless eternity. Yep. What we've got to understand, we've got to understand the truth that God considers our self-righteousness as filth. Amen? And nothing. I mean, Isaiah 64 verse 6 says, But we are all as unclean things, and all our righteousness is as filthy rags. Well, there ain't nothing to righteous about us. Right. Amen? Right. I mean, I mean, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And I will tell you tonight, the fair, there's a lot of Pharisees in our land today oh, yeah. right, right. that are built up on their own self righteousness. They're, they're, they're goody two shoes. Are y'all with me? And they think they're going to heaven on their goody two shoes. They don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't go with girls that do, and they think that's going to get them into heaven. That is self righteousness. And self-righteousness will not get you into heaven. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Now listen to what I'm saying to you tonight. Jesus sat out with that crowd. Amen. He loved them anyhow. 
Amen. And the Pharisees and scribes were upset to Jesus. Here it is. They were upset. They bothered Jesus because he received sinners. Amen. And because he received, uh, we see here, uh, with, because they received sinners, we see four key attitudes of people towards sinners. What is four, uh, what is four key attitudes towards sinners? Just what's going on. Uh, animosity is one of them. In other words, we just hate them. People just hate sinners. We just hate them. You hate sinners? Jesus hated the sin, but he didn't hate the sinner. Right. Right. Amen. I think one of the most wicked, ungodly sins on the face of the earth is Sodom. It's wicked. Amen. What the Sodomites don't know is the very fact that Jesus loves them, but he hates that sin. Right. Amen. And they blame us as Christians, as Christians that hate Sodomites. I don't hate the Sodomite. I, I love them because Jesus loves them. Amen? Right. But I hate their sin. It's Amen. wicked, it's ungodly, and it will burn in hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. But Jesus loves the sinner. Nobody hates the sinner. Amen? There's a lot of people that do. Right. Amen. Animosity. How about number two? Advocate. Just unconcerned. Sure. People just not concerned. Well, just let them go into hell. They're going to go in like, yeah, they are. If we don't tell them. There's another attitude, advocate. We have churches today full of advocates. I'm saved, I'm secured, I'm going to heaven. I don't care about the rest of it. Usually that's where the dead churches are. So they have no livelihood in life. The bloodline and the life of the church is a life of missions and a life of going. And that's the heartbeat of God. And when you have that, you have a lively church. I don't know whether y'all are looking around or not, but this little this little team thing that we're doing around here in the last two months has brought brand new people through the door. We have a ton of visitors here this morning. And I say hallelujah to his name. Amen. And if you don't do anything, it's stirring up something around here. It's because every one of you as a team, as a team, as a church, <coughs> are opening your mouth and saying something. And this team is saying something. Y'all brought somebody. Somebody over here is saying something. And they brought somebody. And it's collectively bringing ministers in here. And they need the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's a lively church. That's a church that will go somewhere. Amen. Amen. Because we have concern. We have concern. Right. There's animosity. There's apathy. And then number three, there's acceptance. There's acceptance or a welcome attitude when they come to you. Amen. They're all to be acceptance. Amen. Right. They look bad. They smell bad. Praise God. Love them anyway. Right. They sat down with Jesus. You sat down with them. Right. Amen. 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 I like to tell one one of us come through the door. Please go brush your teeth or wash your hair or do something. I like to tell them that, but I gotta love them. Amen. Why? They don't know that they're sinners. If they're gracious enough to come your way, praise God, you all accept them. Put your arm around them. Tell them you love them. Amen? Right. And then we see number four. The fourth reason is attentiveness and alertness in seeking them for God. Amen? When they come in, you all have to have a, a bull's eye on them and say, wonder if they need God today or not. Wonder who's saved and who's not saved. Amen. We had a house full of them here this morning here. And I, I, my mind was thinking, I didn't know them from Adam because they came as visitors here today. And I'm just thinking in my heart as a priest, I wonder if they know the Lord. I wonder if they need God. I don't want them to leave here lost without the Lord. Amen. They ought to have a, we ought to have a, a tenderness of a, alertness about that and give them to the Lord. Amen. You know why? Because of that word receiver. Right. Jesus receiver. Amen. Sinners. Amen. The Greek word for receiver means to give access to oneself. It means to receive into companionship. I like it like this, this word here. Receive, Jesus accepts sinners. Did he accept you? Yeah. Did he save you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. He, saved, he saved me. I look back and see what Jesus got. And I wonder, Lord, you didn't get much when you got me. But he accepted me. And he saved me. 
Amen. 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 This is the way Jesus treated these folks. I'll tell you, folks, if you have not put your faith in him, he's trying to reach you tonight. You don't know the Lord, he's trying to reach out to you tonight. If everybody in this town knew that Jesus is reaching toward them and trying to save them and would save their soul, it was just beautiful the other day. And, 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 you know, I don't know Larry, and, and I pray that, that his prayer meant business with God. I don't know his background or where he's from or nothing about it. But I, I just I just said, Larry, I said, Larry, you, you're here on this bed. You've been real sick. And I said, and we got talking about his sickness and different things, and then it led into being ready to meet the Lord. And I said, Larry, I just point blank asked him. I said, are you ready to meet the Lord? And I didn't know him. I don't know him. I said, are you ready to meet the Lord? And then I said it. I said, if you died today, are you sure that you'd go to heaven? And he said, no. I said, would you like to know? You can know today right here on this hospital bed. Amen. And, uh, boy, I tell you, it was, it was breakfast. He said, yeah. I said, you want to go? I said, I know nobody wants to go to hell. And I know you don't want to go to hell. Nobody wants to. But the problem is they don't know how to go to heaven. Amen. And they need to know. And I just started praying. I said, let's pray. I'm going to pray for you, Larry. And I just opened up prayer. And I preached the whole message while I was praying. Hallelujah. And I was preaching that God would save sinners. And God would he'd call out to the Lord and save it. And I gave him the whole plan of salvation in my prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. And I just prayed and preached it. And, and, and when I opened my eyes, I said, now, Larry, you, you've got to call upon the Lord yourself. I can't save you. I said, you pray. You ask the Lord to save you. He started praying, and he got hung up and didn't know what to say. So I helped him. And he prayed, and he called upon God. And he said, Lord, come into my heart. Give me my skin. I accept you now, Lord. Amen. Amen. we got to give him to Jesus. Jesus said, I'm a sinner. Oh, God, help us tonight. Look here at Luke 15. We'll close here. Brother Larry, you and I are going out and don't think about this today. <coughs> I love the old prodigal son that went away. He's out there beating with the hogs. And Luke 15, verse number 15, 15, 15, the Bible says he went and joined himself to a citizen in the far country. And he went, he sent, sent him into the fields to feed swine. So I can see this old boy out there slopping hogs. And He's lost all his money. All his friends are gone because he ain't got no money. Hello? Right. He ain't got no body. The Bible says there's a famine in the land. I believe that was providential. God was starving him to death. Amen. Everybody else is starving. He's out there slopping hogs. I'm looking at that. The Bible says he would have fain to fill his belly with the husk and swine to eat. And no man, and no man gave him to him. His poor belly. He, he came to the end of himself and the end of his road. Are you with me? Guess what? When he came to the Bible says that when he came to himself, in other words, something like a V8 hit him upside the head. Amen. You ever see that story about the V8? You know, they just come to themselves. Should have had a V8. I love that story. I wouldn't drink that stuff or nothing. I love tomatoes, but tomato juice to make me gag. Amen. I can't drink. I can't. I eat a tomato whole. I eat a whole tomato myself, but I can't drink that juice. I can't do it. It's not weird going on, but I, I love the commercial. I love how they slap them. I could have. I, I, I can't do it too much more. I, <laughs> I think I need to be aged myself right now just to hit me. But anyway, and he came to himself. He woke up. Look what he said. How many hired servants of my father's, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to eat to spare? And I'm sitting here perishing with hunger. He's down there with the hogs. He has nothing. No man, the Bible says, helped him. And he came to himself and said, Daddy has got spare food down at the house. And he said, he's got abundance and running over. And he says here in verse number 18, I will arise and go to my father. And will say to my father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called my son. Make me as one of the hired servants. In other words, He's saying to himself, I am a sorry, good for nothing, low down sinner. Amen. He couldn't get much lower, and he was a bit how pitiful he had gotten in the sea. Amen. But he knew where the father was. Amen. He knew where home was. Amen. He said, I'm going to get up. Verse 19. 
He said, I'm no more worthy to be called my son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. The Bible says, and he arose. Verse 20. Now you get this picture. He came to his father. And when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Hey, this is the father that gave him everything. And the son took it and went out there and ride his limb, living and blowed it off. How would you feel as a father? Some of you daddies that got children out in sin need to learn a lesson from this father right here, right? A picture of Jesus. He could have went out there and slapped his son to the ground and said, You boy, you ruined everything I've got. You left everything. You messed up everything. You left home. You, and now you ain't got no one to look at you. He probably looked like, smelled like a hog. He probably had been slumping him. He probably smelled like a hog. He looked, probably looked perfect pitiful. No man gave to him. And he was hurting. He was hurting and he was hungry. And he was heading back home there. And daddy, instead of going down there and rebuking him and turning him away, he ran to where he was, fell on his neck and kissed him. And the Bible says, kissed him and kissed him and kissed him and kissed him and kissed him. Praise God. Amen. That's what the Greek means there. Daddy fell and went out and loved the only son. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you that's where Jesus is tonight for you and me. I'm glad the Father loves me. But he went home and he said, Daddy, I've sinned against you and I'm no worthy, no worthy to be called the Son. Make me as one of your hired servants. No, the Daddy didn't do that. The Bible says, look down there in verse number. Uh, but the Father said, verse 22, But the Father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Bring forth the ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring him to the fat calf and kill him. Let us eat and be married. Why? For this my son was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and he's found. And they began to be married. Amen. Amen. And Jesus is giving you a parable saying just like this old boy right here came home. Heaven rejoices every time a sinner walks down the aisle. Amen. Every time a sinner comes home. Every time the father listens. Every time the father puts his arms around him and kisses him and kisses him and loves him. And they realize they're sorry and didn't see him and got away from the father. Jesus accepts him, loves him, kisses him, puts a robe of righteousness on him, And he takes him back in the family. Amen. Amen. Right. And heaven is rejoicing and shouting tonight over one sinner that comes. Amen. Amen. I want to say hallelujah. He loves rough people. That's right. He loves rowdy people. But he loves those that are willing to return home. Aren't you glad Jesus loves you tonight? Amen. I would say that's a pretty good reason why we need to be intimate with him as well. The fact that he accepted us and didn't reject us. Amen. And you think about it tonight. It just amazes me the sinners would want to come and sit down with Jesus. Amen. Do you have so much the love of Christ on you tonight? Do you have that kind of love of Christ in you and on you tonight? That people would be willing to stand up, sit up beside you and say, Hey, can I talk to you a little bit? How about that? Great, brother. You become more like Jesus. When sinners are willing to sit down with you, find out what you've got that they don't have. Amen? They don't know what you have. But before it's open, if you'll tell them you've got some kind of love. Amen. Them. Amen? Mama, y'all come on up here. Let's get us a Brother Kenny, y'all come on in on that. Give us a song. Get that song I've wandered far away from home. Now I'm coming home. Amen. I like that song. Amen. Aren't you glad God loves you tonight? Amen. How many of you like the prodigal son? You left home. In sin. You left mom and daddy. I was a prodigal son in my daddy's house and I never left home. But I left the Lord. I was living like the devil on dead pipes and ashamed of it. I'm glad the Lord loved me enough. I came home, Brother Red. Came home. Amen, Brother. I told you 
crowd in Sunday school this morning. My daddy was gracious. I was about 18, 19, 20. I was living for myself, trying to do my own, trying to find my own way. We was talking about the Lord's will in Sunday school this morning. I was going my own way, doing my own thing. Thought I had it all figured out. I was just miserable and lost. I was without the Lord. I wasn't. I was saved. I was just miserable. My dad, I can still remember my dad graciously, graciously changed me and said, Dave, you'll take this book. And he had the Bible in his hand. And just read one chapter a day. He was trying to get me back in the Word. Amen. He said, just read one chapter. Try it. He knew I was miserable. I was going my own way. I was going far away from the far country as I could get my own way. I started doing what my daddy said. I was listening to rock music, goofing off with fellas and going out in the middle of the night. If he'd have known half of what I did, probably knew it. He probably would have killed me in his own house. He wouldn't have put up with it in his house. He'd thrown me out in the street. And my daddy loved me. Are you with me? Yes. He loved me. I believe I'm a preacher tonight because I had a daddy that loved me. Before it was over with, down here in Liberty, down there for a weekend, met the school people down there, stayed for college for a weekend, met the school students. I liked it. My dad said, we, 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 we'll try to work it out if you want to go down there. We didn't have no money, not much, but somehow, some way, got in school. <clears throat> God worked it out the first year. I was still running. I was running from the Lord at school. So well, I can get away from Daddy, won't have to be around his preaching. So I go to Bible college. <laughs> Real smart fellow. <laughs> Had devotions every night. They prayed before every class. They preach Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in chapel. And then you go to church all day on Sunday and Wednesday night church. Bible college. Had devotions in the dorm every night. So every time I turned around, Jesus was hitting me right in the face. Every, every which way, it was Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Praise his name, brother. You know what he's showing me? He said, David, you can run from me, but you can't get away from me. And the Lord showed me he loved me. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. And he loves you. Amen. And I've just been going through this the last few days. Tell my Lord. I said, Lord, I failed you many ways. Somehow I'm going to get back to loving you like I do. Amen. He sat down with me and he changed my life. Aren't you glad he sat down with you? Yes. Let's all stand and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God tonight. Forgive us, Lord, and our Temptations where we fall suddenly. We give in to the desires of the devil and whatever hinders us. Give us when we fall short. Or this morning we're trying to say that we need to be intimate with you. And I want it to be a known fact tonight that you are intimate with us. That you do love sinners. I'm grateful for the day you sat down where I was, lost, and showed this old boy that I needed Christ. And I'm glad you showed me Calvary, you showed me the greatest love, sacrifice that no man has ever done, bleeding and dying on the cross for our sin. Lord, I pray tonight that we don't wonder or get wavering get willful in our rebellion and turn. God, please bring us home and help us to realize the Father loves us. I thank you, Lord, for your compassion. I thank you for running toward me when I mess up. I'm thankful for the Lord for you putting your arms around me and kissing on me and kissing on me and, and kissing on me again. And Lord, I'm your child and you're my father. And I want to say I love you. And I want to love you more. Help us to love you more, Lord. Thank you for the word of God.
God tonight. Help your people tonight, I pray. Bless them, Lord. Take this invitation now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hymn number 490. Let's just sing a song tonight. They're preaching about love today. I don't know how to give the invitation to say the Lord loves you tonight. He loved you when you was a sinner. If you're saved tonight, He loves you even more. Amen. Amen. How intimate are you with Him? You need to think about how intimate He is with you. He loves you tonight. If you need to come, maybe you wandered away, maybe you just need to pray tonight. I don't know. You just need to pray. You obey God tonight. You come if you need to come. Let's sing the song. Sing it with you. I've wandered far away.
Y'all come by and shake his hand tonight. Amen. Have you join in the church with us. Amen. I praise his wonderful name. Brother Kim and I went out way back yonder and then we visited him a couple times, one time, I know of anyway. But I, I rejoice with him tonight. You come and rejoice with him. Tell him how much we appreciate you coming. Let's have a word of prayer. Don't forget now, ladies, we're going to meet here before we leave here with Miss Marie. Y'all sit around and help. Help, uh, help get it organized about the here, here, okay? Mm-hmm. So, can you dismiss us right here? We'll stay right here. Go ahead. Praise the Father. Praise the God. Indeed, it's wonderful to be in the house, Lord. <laughs> Father, we rejoice, Lord, as brothers oh, and sisters come to the church. Yes, Lord. We pray that you pour out your blessings this yes. day, Lord. Father, we are blessed already.